This week's reading jumps six months back or forth in our calendar, right into Holy Week. After a lot of traveling through the countryside, Jesus has arrived in Jerusalem. The welcome he receives, riding on the donkey, is the talk of the city. Hosanna to the son of David. Who is this guy? Temple authorities ask, hearing the children praising Jesus. He doesn't stop the people who call him son of David. Who does he think he is? Now, son of David is a messianic title, referring to the God-sent person who will free God's chosen people from oppression and lead them into freedom and a glorious future. But naming yourself the Messiah is blasphemy, which deserves a death sentence. Jesus doesn't stop at the city gates, but moves on through the town towards the temple. And there he turns over the tables of the vendors and the moneylenders. What does he think he's doing? On what authority is he acting? From the view of the chief priests and elders, Jesus is an insolent upstart who is bringing nothing but unnecessary unrest to the ordered and legitimate business in the temple. And when he returns the following day, they aim to unmask him as a pretender to get him out of their way. So they approach him as he's teaching. Now, by what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you the authority? Their question is setting a trap. Either Jesus publicly declares that he's acting on God's authority, then he will be accused of blasphemy and follow the path of a lot of other wannabe messiahs. Or he will say by human, by human authority, then what right does he have to act against the orders of chief priests who are running the temple according to God-given law? They are the authority. Jesus, however, doesn't fall into this trap. He refuses to give a clear answer by asking a counter question and promising them a reply if they answer his question. A really smart rhetorical move, by the way. Jesus asked, did the baptism of John come from heaven or was it of human origin? By asking this, Jesus puts the priest and the elders in a bind. If they say from heaven, Can you hear me? Oh, wait a second. If they say from heaven, they look like hypocrites because they didn't believe or get baptized by John. If they say of human origin, they might have the crowds against them who think John was a prophet. Therefore, they refuse to reply. And in turn, Jesus doesn't have to answer either. Smart move. But he doesn't leave them without a clue about what he thinks about them and their attitude. He decides to tell a parable. A man tells his two sons to go to work in the vineyard. The first declines, but changes his mind later and goes. The second agrees, but does not go. Now, which of the two did the will of his father, Jesus asked. The first, the one who changed his mind, the chief priests and elders reply. There is a word in this parable that leads us a little bit deeper into the text if we look at the Greek, metamelomai. Literally, that means to change one's cares, to feel remorse or to regret. That is what the first son did after he replied no to the wishes of his father. And that is the same word that John the Baptist uses when he preaches to the people coming to him in the wilderness, repent turn around, change your mind. It is a change of mind with remorse and regret. So this is what the first son experienced after declining his father's request, a change of mind with remorse and regret, so that he ended up doing what his father had asked of him. Coming from a family with four kids, I wondered if there was also a third child that said yes, and then did what it was asked to do. And a fourth one who declined and stayed true to their word. But maybe in the end, that is beside the point. The parable is aimed 
at the arrogance of those who are in charge, who are more concerned about holding the status quo than about the well-being of all. And in this text, it is the chief priests and the elders. They won't change their exploiting ways of governing the temple by our exorbitant ties and taxes that are blocking the access to the divine, that literally keeps the bodies of the poor outside the gates of the temple, forcing them into more and endless debt before they can approach and worship God. And who is this parable aimed at today? And Jesus says, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him, but the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. The tax collectors and prostitutes follow John's call of repentance. So they are like the first son, but you, you didn't even change your mind when you saw so many other people changing their ways and minds. There are two things I want to point out here. Firstly, both sons fall short of the father's wishes. The first one, though he eventually goes to the vineyard, only gets around to it after experiencing a remorseful change of mind. And so he has no grounds for looking down on his brother. In terms of initial action, the two are fundamentally the same. Neither went to the vineyard in the first place. Secondly, Jesus doesn't say that chief priests and elders won't come to the kingdom of God at all. They just won't be the first. If we think we are doing great, are in the right, and have nothing to be re reproached for, maybe we should think again. This is not about punishment. This parable speaks about humbleness, about humility. Like the two sons, we all fall short in one way or another. What, matter, what matters is the willingness to be open to changing our minds and our lives. Without this basic attitude, status and authority, authority don't really matter and probably cause more harm than good. The parable also makes me think about the church of the baptized in general. There are so many people who are hurt by their congregation and church, failed by their leaders, excluded by fellow members, condemned by their theology, abandoned by inaction. Christians are hypocrites. They preach water, but drink wine. That is a phrase I got to hear a lot in Germany. They talk love and forgiveness, but act in the opposite way. The question I have for you to ponder this week is this very personal one. Which of the sons are you? Do you say no at first, but then possess the open-mindedness to question and change your initial response? Or do you say yes, inhabiting the appearance of following the father's request, but then not acting accordingly? cheaply excusing ourselves for our failure to do so. I'm sorry, but I am broken, God. You made me so. Or to our fellow humans. I'm as broken as you are. Can't really do anything about it. Sorry. What matters is that we are always invited to be the first son at every moment in our lives. We are always called to change our minds and our hearts. Amen.